For Satan himself is transformed into an angel of light. Sometimes I think that we think the devil is going to show up, and when he shows up, we believe he's going to be somebody that's going to have two horns coming out the front side of his head and a tail wagging behind him with a red face and a red type of skin. That is not how the devil appears. The Bible says the devil appears, if you would please, as he does appear being transformed into an angel of light. If the devil could get you to believe a half of a lie, then he's accomplished his purpose in not getting you to believe the whole truth. That's what I believe is the danger of having so many various translations of the Bible that's out there. Because he has been behind most of all, if not all, of those translations. And because of that, when you uh, go to a church nowadays, uh, some pastors are very confusing because they will use the NIV, the ASV, the RSV. They'll use many, many versions of the Bible. No wonder they have to use their screens because who could carry all those Bibles into a church service? Now, may I say, we thank God for our King James Bible. And in our King James Bible, we don't have to worry about uh, entire chapters being cut out as they've cut out of the NIV. And we don't have to worry about them attacking the very essentials that is the essentials for that which is the gospel in order to be saved like they do in the NIV and other versions. No, we can thank God that we have a Bible that they haven't cut this out and cut that out and threw this out and threw that out to distort that which is the truth of the living God. But yet in our Bible, we also see that uh, he, our Lord, is talking about Satan and describes him as being transformed into an angel of light. The Bible talks about this one that's called Satan in the book of Job, chapter 1, verses 1 through 8. The Bible says, Now there was a day when the sons of God came to the presence themselves to present themselves uh, before the Lord, and Satan came also among them. Verse 7 of Job 1, the Bible says, And the Lord said unto Satan, uh, Whence comest thou? And Satan answered the Lord and said, uh, From going to and fro in the earth and walking up and down in it. And the Lord said unto Satan, Hast thou considered my servant Job? There is none like him in all the earth, a perfect and upright man, one that feareth God and escheweth evil. Now, wait a minute. And so here the devil comes. And by the way, uh, the devil, if you will, uh, uh, does not have to bring false accusations against the brethren. The Bible says that the devil accuseth the brethren. Uh, and so uh, he can accuse the brethren because of the things that they don't do that they should do or the things that they do do that they should not do. And so he doesn't have to bring false accusations, but he brings that which is real accusations. Now, if I was going to get in a fight tonight, I'd want to be able to understand Stand my enemy. If I was going to get into a fight tonight, I'd like to find out not just his strengths, but his weaknesses. I'd like to find out some details about how he knows what he does know. And so tonight, I want us to study a little bit as I speak on tonight things to know about Satan. Things to know about Satan. Let me give you some things tonight. Statement number one Satan has a will. Satan has a will. The Bible says in 2 Timothy chapter 2 and in verse 26, the Bible says that they may recover themselves. Now watch, it's very noteworthy, the wording of this, uh, that, they may the, that they may recover themselves out of the snare of the devil. So he does have snares. It says, who have taken by him at his will. So the devil does have a will. Uh, now, the Bible says that you and I, as children of God, are to recover, and listen to what it says and what it teaches. We're supposed to recover ourselves out of the snares of the devil. So you and I, when we get caught up, into a snare. I don't know if you've ever hunted. I used to hunt quite a bit as I was coming up. And can I tell you uh, that uh, we would set snares for rabbits. We would set snares for coons. Uh, we would set snares for that which is uh, foxes that would break into the chicken coops. And uh, we would try to set snares. Why? Because as that snare would snap, it would uh, hold that one in captivity. That's exactly what the devil wants to do. 
The devil wants not necessarily all it wants to destroy you. The devil wants to simply hold you back from doing God's will. If he can get you caught up into a snare, if he can get you caught up, if you would please, into something that is going to stop you from successfully fulfilling the will of God in your life, then he'll try and do it. Oh, he might use a snare tonight of somebody disappointing you. He might use a snare tonight of somebody emotionally hurting you. He might use a snare tonight of somebody that owes you money but doesn't pay you what they owe. He might use a snare tonight of somebody that you know is a brother or sister in Christ, but they've decided to go into sin, and because they've decided to go into sin, that becomes a snare in your life. He might use that which is a job. Uh, uh, and when you got hired on, they promised you this, that, and the other, but now you find the reality, and it's not like they promised you, and that becomes a snare. He might use who hath caused, uh, who hath hindered you, and so he might use a who in your life. Maybe, it, uh, I hate to say it, and I hate to even think it, but from time to time, the husband might be a snare to a wife. From time to time, the wife might be a snare to a husband. From time to time, the children might be a snare to their parents. From time to time, the parents might be a snare, yes, even to their children. From time to time, there might be somebody that is in leadership that might be a snare to you. From time to time, there might be a neighbor that's a snare to you. From time to time, traffic in the Dallas Metro might be a snare to you. Can I tell you that there's many snares that the devil will use, and the Bible says here that, uh, watch it now, uh, that uh, they may recover themselves from the snare of the devil. And so God expects you to recover yourself. What's that mean? Uh, that means that uh, you get over it. That means you don't uh, allow it to trip you. That means you don't allow it to stop you, yea, hinder you from serving Christ. Isaiah chapter 14 and verse 13, the Bible says, And thou hast said in thine heart, uh, and this is the uh, God, this is God testifying about Satan. Uh, he says, Thou hast said in thine heart, I will ascend into heaven. I will exalt uh, uh, my throne above the stars of God. Uh, I will uh, sit also uh, upon the mount of the congregation in the sides of the north. Uh, in verse 14 of Isaiah 14, I will ascend above the heights of the clouds. I will be like the most high. You see, the devil has a will. And so the devil wants to use his will to get you messed up in your head, in your direction, in your performance, in your practice of serving God. The devil wants to get you so messed up so that you don't do God's will because he trips you up with his will. So statement number one, Satan has a will. Statement uh, number two, statement number two, Satan has a memory, has a memory. Now, I can be honest with you, uh, 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 memories are good to have. It's a sad thing when somebody begins to lose their memory. I have uh, precious memories of coming up as I was a child on that 180-acre farm in Millers, Maryland with uh, who I call my adopted grandparents. I have precious memories of that. I have precious memories of the young man by the name of David Lee that had a part in me receiving Christ as Savior. I have precious memories of that. I have precious memories in coming up and uh, uh, cutting the wood and uh, uh, piling it up and uh, doing it at the beginning of spring so that it would have all summer to dry out so that we could have good burning wood uh, come the winter time. Uh, I have precious memories of my friends getting out there with those uh, splitting irons and those uh, sledgehammers and those axes and uh, working hard and giving it everything that we've got. Uh, I have got. I've got precious memories of that. I got precious memories when boys that was uh, there on uh, Maple Grove Road where I grew up and we had a basketball court in the front of our house and, and uh, I've got precious memories of people coming uh, from uh, the neighboring uh, uh, farms and whatnot and we would uh, uh, get games going on uh, Saturday evenings in particular and we'd play basketball. Oh, I've got good memories of that. 
I got good memories. My grandpa died before I uh, was old enough to learn how to handle a gun. So guess what? It was my grandmother. I, yeah, that's right. It was my grandmother that taught me uh, a lot about gaming. Oh, gaming was different back then than it is today. Let me explain. Uh, gaming back then meant that you went out and you shot wild game. Gaming today means that you sit and you pretend to shoot something. <laughs> one is real and one is not. <laughs> when we started taking away the real from our boys, that's when our boys started to become sissies. Now, can I say, but back in those days, I remember uh, uh, getting a gun when I was just a young man, and I remember my grandmother taking uh, me out and showing me how to trap certain things and showing me how to follow certain things and uh, uh, showing me that uh, uh, what the, tra the tracks of a, of a fox was and what the tracks of a dog was and the difference and whatnot. And uh, I remember uh, those times, and I remember her showing me how to load it and how to point it and how to shoot it. And and I was thankful for that because one time I almost shot her. But I remember those things. Now, I'm saying this. I'm saying that Satan has a will. I'm saying that Satan has a memory. Uh, Matthew chapter 4 and verse 5, the Bible says, Then the devil taketh him up into a high city and uh, setteth him on the a pinnacle of the temple. In verse 6, Matthew 4, it says this, And he saith unto him, If thou be the Son of God... By the way, he knew he was the Son of God, but he's trying to cast doubt. He's trying to get him to prove himself. And the Son of God has not a need to prove himself. The Bible says, If thou be the Son of God, cast thyself down, uh, for it is written, uh, He shall give his angels charge concerning thee, and in their hands, listen to it now, they shall bear thee up, lest at any time thou dash thy foot against a stone. And so what's he doing? He's calling forth memory. He's quoting Scripture. Uh, the devil has a good memory. By the way, the way to overcome the wicked one is to be able to know your Bible because as our Lord was attacked there, he would say over and over again to the sly one, over and over again to the wicked one, over and over again to the evil one, over and over again to Satan. He would look at him and he would say this, it is written. You cannot overcome the devil tonight by the power of your will. You cannot overcome the devil tonight because of your positive thinking. You cannot overcome the devil tonight because you have great athletic ability. You cannot overcome the devil tonight because you find yourself to be an intelligent person. The only way that you can be able to overcome the wicked one is by the blood of the Lamb and that which is the quoting of Scripture. And can I say tonight, he is on your trail. The devil wants to destroy you and he has an accurate memory of that which is the Scripture. And many times, more than not, he'll dilute the truth just to get you off track. I'm saying tonight that Christians would do themselves a great favor if they would stick in the Bible their hearts, stick in the Bible their minds, stick in the Bible that which is all truth, and put that concentratively into their heart. It would change their lives forever. The Bible says in Psalm 119 and verse 11, Thy word have I hid in mine heart that I might not sin against thee. It would be good, uh, oh, I thank God that we have people that's interested in sports, but uh, uh, being somebody that knows all the names of the various teams that's in a particular sport is not going to do you much good when you're attacked by the wicked one. Being somebody that knows everything that you need to know about that which is the mechanics of a certain industry is not going to help you to overcome the wicked one. Oh, no. But the Bible says, Thy word have I hid in my heart. You hide the word of God in your heart that you might not sin against God. You might not know the one that's called Satan that causes a man to be able to err from the faith. Can I tell you, hide that Bible in your heart. Uh, why? Because it's the washing of the word that cleanses the mind. As we take the Word of God and we pour it in, it washes out the filth of the mind. It causes a person to think differently. 
I submit to you, as I uh, said this morning, that 1962 and 1963 is when those parents uh, uh, decided that they did not want their children in the public school to read the Bibles or to read prayers, and they took those uh, elements out of the public school. And that's one of the greatest tragedies in American history. Why? Because what you put in is what's going to come out. Uh, you put garbage in, garbage is going to come out. You put righteousness in, righteousness is going to come out. Now may I say tonight, as loving and as kind as I possibly can, we need to spend more time putting the right things in. Tonight I submit to you that Satan has a will. Satan has a memory. Satan has desires. Uh, look at Luke chapter 22 verse 31. The Bible says, and the Lord said, Simon, Simon, behold, Satan hath desired to have you that he may sift you as wheat. Boy, that sounds horrible, doesn't it? Yes, sir. To sift you as wheat. I don't know if you're familiar with a sifter, but it would be flat in most cases, or would have just a little ovalness to it, and there would be a screen there, and they would just do that sifting, uh, almost like you would see in the old Western films where they would do sifting for gold. There would be the sifters, and they would sift. Uh, what does that do? That takes out all the chaff, if you will. Most of the time, when uh, back in the Bible days, when, uh, when they would have the places that were the wine presses, that would be in the low part of the mountain, normally close to a stream or something that would be moving the elements along. And they would uh, uh, have the, the wheat mills, if you will, the, the wheat men's, uh, uh, if you would, the, the wheat uh, mm, uh, uh, cabins, if you will, or the wheat barns, if you will, on the top side of the hills. So that as they would uh, uh, sift, the chaff would blow out. It wouldn't uh, collect. Now, wait a minute. Here's what the Bible says here. The Bible says that the Lord is warning Simon, that's Peter, he said, Simon, Simon, he says, Behold, Satan hath desired to have you. Satan is after every daddy tonight. I want to give you a warning shout tonight. Satan's after every mother tonight. Satan is after every college-age single young person tonight. Every single professional that sits under the pitch of my voice tonight, may I give you a cry and say, Satan is after you. Satan is after every teenager tonight, and Satan is after every child tonight. The Bible says that Satan hath desired to have you. Why? He says that he may sift you as wheat. He is wanting to put you through a funneling type of filter that is going to cause you great harm. And may I say tonight, listen, uh, we ought to decide to pray for each other. Pray for each other. Pray for each other's families and uh, pray for each other's marriages and pray for each other's children and uh, pray for the deacons that's in the church and pray for the Sunday school teachers that's in the church and pray for those that work on the bus routes and sing in the choir, work in the nursery and those that are greeters and those that are, are ushers and pray for those that uh, uh, work in various areas of the, uh, the five children's churches that we have or the Spanish department that we have or the special needs program that we have. Uh, we ought to decide in those areas and all the many, many other uh, uh, type of multiple ministries we have here at Parkside Baptist Church, uh, there needs to be somebody that decides that they're going to get along with God and pray and pray and pray. Why? Because Satan hath desired to have you. He liked to trip you up so that you get out of church. He liked to trip you up uh, so that he could make you disappear. He liked to get a hold of you and get you so discouraged that you give up on God, you give up on the Bible, you give up on the truth, you give up on marching forward, and you decide to go backwards. Uh, you ought to decide tonight, instead of playing in the valley, that you're praying on the mountaintop. You ought to decide tonight to give God every inch of your life. You say, I've got a kid that's backslidden. Have you prayed? Bible says the answer here, Luke chapter 22 and verse 32. The Lord gives Simon a warning in verse 31. He said, Satan hath desired to have you that he may sift you as wheat. Verse 32 gives the answer, but I prayed for thee that thy faith fail not. 
I, I worry about someone. Josh, you help me if you will. I stand over there. I worry about someone that is running this direction and then they stop midway. I worry about them when all of a sudden they stop serving Christ. There's a reason. You and I should never stop serving Christ. Well, I've lost my enthusiasm about church. Why? I've lost my enthusiasm about the Bible. Why? I've lost my enthusiasm about putting God first in my life. Why? There's got to be a reason. I used to be on fire for God. I used to do this. I used to do that. I, uh, you know, don't you get tired of hearing uh, people say, well, I used to, I used to, I used to, I used to, I used to. Oh, why don't you do something now? May I remind you as kindly as I know how, your life is short. The Bible says it's but a vapor to appear for a little while and then it vanisheth away. It's not in the Bible. That was my part. But it vanisheth away. It's only here a little while. Right. Right. Well, I know what God wants me to do, but I'll tell you, I'm just going to uh, wait on this a while. Uh, why wait? Uh, uh, you've only got one life. It's one. short. It's not very long. Uh, uh, give God all that you have right now. Right. You've only got so much energy. Yes. You know, the older I get, the more I find out this to be true. That when I was a young man, I looked up to older men of God. Here's the problem. They're gone. I said, oh, what happened to them? Well, it wasn't a partial rapture. They died. I remember going to the funerals of this man and this man and this man and this man and sending flowers when I couldn't attend to this one and this one and this one and reaching out to their wives and trying to help them during the bereavement time uh, to this one and 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 this one. You do not live forever. So the Bible teaches that Satan has desires to do what? He's got desires to trip you up, to grab you, to get you entangled again with the affairs of this life. You say, you're saying that a Christian ought to be a Christian all the time. Well, that about makes as much sense as saying a human ought to be human all the time. May, may I say that, uh, yeah, I think you ought to be Christ-like all the time. I really do. I really do. I, I think you ought to try and live for God all the time, every day of your life. Why? Because that's who you are. You're a Christian. May I say this? May I say Satan has a will. Satan has a memory. By the way, he's got a good memory. How many of you have ever forgotten something? Be honest. Raise your hand. Satan does not forget. He has a very good memory. You remember when you sinned and you did thus and so? Satan remembers that. And if you trip, then he would try to get you to trip again. Remember the time when God spoke to your heart and uh, you were supposed to help somebody and you didn't do it because you had this event going on in your life and that became the precedent. Well, now, when the, the Lord tries to get you to help somebody else again, you know what Satan does? He brings these same type of events up in your house to try and get you to not help somebody else again. Yeah. Uh, he uh, is the one, if you will please, that has a will and he tries to get you in his will, not in God's will, and he has a good tracking memory. Good track. You ever see those dogs? Tracking dogs? You know, police departments use tracking dogs. Uh, when they lose somebody, they can get this dog to sniff the clothes of that person to get the scent of the person. You can turn that dog loose and he'll try and follow a trail off that scent. Well, can I tell you tonight, the devil's on your trail. He knows exactly where you veered too much to the left. He knows exactly where you veered too much to the right. He knows exactly what you've done. Satan has a memory. 
Satan has a desire. And then lastly, Satan has devices. He has devices. Listen to it. 2 Corinthians chapter 2 and verse 11. The Bible says, uh, uh, lest Satan should get an advantage of us. Have you ever done this? Have you ever seen two people play basketball and one is better than the other and one gets the advantage of the other one? People sit in the bleachers and they watch the two playing basketball and they don't make fun of the one that was taken advantage of because it was absolutely legal what was done, but the other one definitely had more skill power. Now, can I tell you, the devil has more skill power than you do. The Bible says this, lest Satan should get uh, an advantage of us. Watch this, the last portion of the verse, and I'm almost done. For we are ignorant of his devices. The word devices there means tricks. It means, if you would please, uh, schemes. Satan is a good schemestress, if you would. I didn't say seamstress, I said schemestress though he liked to sew you up in his pocket. But he's a person, if you will, please, that is full of tricks. He will try to get you uh, to be ignorant of those uh, devices. You know, some things are common sense, is it not? All of a sudden, you see somebody starting to miss church services, and we know the devil's hoodwinking them but they can't see it. Why? Because he uses various devices to get them out. And he's got many, many devices. I'm not talking about just uh, uh, those that do the gaming today, and that is a device. I'm not talking about just that. I'm talking about many devices that he puts in your life that he uses to be able to pull you away from doing the will of God. Can I say, when the devil pulls you away from doing the will of God, he has now accomplished the very thing that he wants to accomplish, and he might even pull you away from doing the will of God by getting you to do something that's good, but not the will of God. I know people that don't go to church on Sunday morning because they're helping the poor. You know what happened? The devil used, if you would please, something to get them to do something that was good that was outside of the perimeter of God's will for their life. May I say this tonight, that Satan has devices. We have to become very, very, if you would please, understandable and knowledgeable about the devices that Satan has. Now, the good thing is the Lord said, I prayed for you. He said, hey, he said, I prayed that during the times uh, when the devil tries to attack you, I prayed that the devil would not be able to get a hold of you and destroy you. He said, don't leave the faith. May I encourage you tonight, don't leave the faith. There are people that will try, honestly, I know it, I know it for sure. There are people that have good intentions, parents even, friends even, co-workers even, employees, employers that will try to get you off base. Oh, as the Lord said, I prayed for thee. May I say that we ought, as I said, to also pray for each other. When you see somebody going astray, uh, you ought to try and help them because you love them. And one of the ways to help them is to pray for them. Pray for them as husband and wife, mother and daddy, if you will, and their children. Uh, pray for those that's in leadership. Uh, pray for those that are going through agonizing, uh, 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 distress, uh, stressful times in their life. Uh, pray for them. Pray for them. Uh, if I were you, I'd pray for them before I criticize them. Pray for them. Well, I tell you what, I just tell you what, I don't think my wife should have did that. Did you pray for her? I don't think my husband should have did that. 
Did you pray for him? Why don't you pray that God gives them wisdom? Pray that God guides them. Pray that God helps them. Don't be one of these. Stand up again, Josh. You're my guinea pig. And so uh, don't be one of these folks. Don't do this. Please don't, don't do this. Don't do this. Don't do this. Yet, if somebody comes up and they tell you a burden. Don't do this. Don't do this. Don't, don't, don't do this. I sure will pray for you. Sure will. Then you walk away and you never even do it. Don't do that. Oftentimes, more than not, somebody comes up to me and they say, uh, Preacher, would you pray for me about this? You know, I'm, I'm really concerned about that. I sure will. Let's pray right now. Father, thank you for Josh. Thank you for the privilege to spend time with him and him sharing his heart with me. And God, I pray. And I'll pray with him right there and then. You know why? Because I'm about as human as you are. <laughs> and so when I walk away, I'll forget. Oh, you say you won't do it? Yeah, I will. So it's good to pray for him right then and there. Uh, 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 Russell Anderson was uh, getting ready to go into surgery. Uh, by the way, had surgery and came through, and that was good. God blessed. But uh, I, I've known him for a long time, so I called him up, and I said, hey, uh, just check it on you. How you doing? And we talked for a little bit. And I said, here's what I want to do. I said, I called you up, check on you. Uh, I care about you, love you, and I want to pray with you. Let's pray together right now. You'd be surprised if you pray how God will answer. But God will never answer if you never pray. I said this morning, you have not because you ask not. And so if you pray, you'd be surprised what God would do. Preacher called me up just the other day, and he said, Preacher, I'm about as low as a snake belly. I said, Ooh, that's pretty low. I said, I've not heard that phrase in a long time. As low as a snake belly. That's that. You can't get much lower than that. He said, Well, he said, I'm just so discouraged. I feel like quitting. I said, Well, I'll give you some advice about not quitting, but first let's pray together. By the time we got done praying, I said, now, let's talk about this. He said, no, oh, no, you don't need to talk to me now. He said, uh, God spoke to my heart during that prayer. Hello. You know, praying will encourage somebody. Praying will strengthen their faith. It will. I'm telling you, it will. I go to the hospital. When I go to the hospital, don't go to the hospital so you get one of these. It's not worth the expense. But every time I go to the hospital, I try and take somebody a book to read because they get bored. Now, don't go to the hospital just because I'm going to bring you a $9 book. Your bill would be far better than that, I'm sure, <laughs> far greater than that. But I try to when somebody has to stay overnight in the hospital. Now, I don't do it for those that go in for day surgeries and stuff like that. I don't do that. But, you know, when you stay in the hospital overnight, you need something to keep your mind rolling the right direction, you know, because you can get pretty discouraged, especially late at night, you know, and the devil knocks on your door and you start to think bad things or you start to think about giving up and quitting. So I'll, I'll give you something to keep your mind occupied a little bit and I'll bring you a book. But when I go to the hospital, I don't just bring a book. I bring prayer. You say, well, do you believe that everybody that you pray for will be delivered? Oh, no, I prayed for some people and they died. I prayed for some people and God gave them a longer life. I prayed for some people and God changed their life. Hello. I still believe this, Brother Bryant, of course, Brother Bell, and Brother Kazar and these good men uh, has been here with me a long, long time, and many of you uh, remember Brother Bryant. Remember Brother Bryant. Matter of fact, he used to captain that chair that Brother Bell used to sit at. Brother Bryant came, and he had cancer, and he told me one day in the office, he said, it's not going to be good. And, uh, and he said, maybe I just ought to give up and quit. I said, no, you never quit. When you can't walk down the aisle, I want you to sit back there and captain that chair. And the worse the cancer got, the more he would struggle walking down the aisle, but everybody loved him. And I said, he said, I think I just need to quit. I don't have a purpose. I said, you've got a purpose. These men love you. You sit back there and you captain that chair. You tell them what to do and they'll do it snap just like that. We all love you. 
I said, now I suggest if we could get together and have prayer, we'll anoint you with oil, what the Bible teaches in the book of James, and we'll pray for you and the prayer of faith. The Bible says deliver the sick. And so we, we'll pray, we'll pray. It's God's will uh, uh, that we come together and pray and, and express our hearts to God. God wants to hear what's on your heart. God wants to hear what's on our heart. We as his children ought to come to him. And uh, Brother Bryant had a very bad report, very bad report. They said he was not going to live long very bad bad report and uh, he was down and I said well we just need to meet for prayers what we did and we did this a couple of times but on this particular day it just was not a good report at all I said let's meet for prayer we'll meet for prayer and we met back in the old sweetheart couples room back there and some of you uh, deacons will remember and we prayed for brother Bryant we anointed him with oil and uh, he called me the next day and he said I've got energy I hadn't had in a long time God answered prayer. Sometimes God will answer prayer and extend lives. He will. But he never will answer prayer, my dear beloved friend, if you don't pray. Well, you know that, uh, that person, their, their backslidden is a dog. Well, pray for them. He said, I have prayed for you that your, your faith fail not. Father, bless we pray tonight.